Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and welcome to another episode of Dank Web Browsing, Dark Web Browsing, or Deep Web Browsing, the part of the week where we take a look at the danker side of the internet, ladies and gentlemen. As always, we have a random thing to look through the week. It's late at night right now, and you know what? It's that perfect hour for me to really become kind of that kind of that uh, odd fella in the middle of the night. But I'm holding off things, ladies and gentlemen. Let's dive in to the very first website. Oh hell yeah, dude. Targeted Individuals 101. Now, this this is one of my favorite styles of websites out there, V2. So basically I love, for those of you who don't know what targeted individuals are, targeted individuals are people that believe or people that are actually targeted by a third party or it's, it's basically what the name suggests. But a lot of people signify this as sort of the government keeping its eye on a select few individuals. You know, the people that might be peeking a little too into things they shouldn't be, right? Now I'm a believer of things like the Illuminati. Okay, I believe that there is a shadowy government you know, force that's keeping us in control. Um, it might sound so outlandish to some people, but you know what? I, I challenge, try and disprove it, right? But ladies and gentlemen, basically if you look too much into that stuff and it turns out it's real, then guess what? You have now put yourself as targeted individual territory numero uno. And that's one of the things you gotta be careful about. So let's go actually dive into it and read. So this is V2K. John Lennon on insanity. Our society is run by insane people for insane objectives. I think we're being run by maniacs for maniacal ends. And I think I'm liable to be put away as insane for expressing that. That's what that that's what's insane about it. So V2K voice to skull device is a weapon used for trans transmitting voices with low or high frequencies. Voices can be for commands or harassment attacks that may look like the TI's own voice. So V2K is basically something where the government can inject your own voice into your head. So basically people that say technically that they're schizophrenic and they're hearing voices, well, some of those voices could actually end up being the government inducing thoughts into your head. So basically it could be like uh, the government trying to scare you or uh, at, at very, very dark moments, it's, the government could be trying to force you in some way, of course, if you're being targeted. Again, this is all speculation to force you into ending your life or something like that because it, it, you know, it's one of those things where the whole tinfoil hat stuff, yeah, that's where it's born from because the idea of wearing the tinfoil hat in the first place is you effectively prevent yourself from getting any of these weird uh, thoughts in your head because it's all like microwave technology being shot into your forehead, uh, something like that. But let's go into it. So the psychoelectronic type of mind control I'm discussing here is a covert around the clock harassment of innocent citizens living in their homes and communities, and it's currently worldwide in scope. The harassment includes electronic mind body attacks, street harassment skits, destruction of family and other relationships, and destructions of careers. One especially invasive attack method is the area of psychoelectronic mind control is voice to skull. Voice to skull is a transmission of voice or any other audible or subliminal sound directly into the hearing sense of the mind control victim. This is sometimes done around the clock and can be one of the severest forms of torture. Voice to skull technology is sometimes referred to as a synthetic telepathy. Current day voice to skull cannot be stopped by any known electromagnetic shielding, a fact which demonstrates how advanced classified mind control technology has become. And I guess that's, that's true. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, all right, I can't prove or disprove this, but it does sound really shocking and weird to me to the point where like, you know what? I'm just going to say it. It, it, it really, I, I don't know. It just, to me, I believe in V2K. I think this is to an extent real. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that we don't know exists and something like this, I don't know. It, it, it just comes across to me is, I, I don't know. It, 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 it comes across to me as something that can be done. Now they have other forms of targeting stuff, stuff, stuff that goes on. So just organized stalking her electronic harassment which uh, is methods used by persons targeted specific individuals. So signs, mind games, isolations versus socialization, time is money, paranoia and delusions, reporting with concrete evidence, neutralizing the harassment. So basically stalking, gang stalking is what it is, which again is very real. Direct energy weapons, uh, that's like for something else. So that's for like V2K, like how you can shoot the beams into someone's head and uh, organize stalking electronic harassment. So EH is electronic harassment. So I guess that's, basically it all it all boils down into the same umbrella now over here they actually have videos so like the science channel talks about it or admits it so let's hear they're a very faint sound therefore a person interprets them as their own th thoughts so basically because they're so quiet we think that it's our mind going off right i mean how can you prove that it's your mind playing games on you or it isn't you really can't 
Since they're a very faint sound, only those things that they are known to as a person can be manipulated. Put it simply, they won't be able to teach you Chinese. An example that is that if a person says a sentence very slowly and close to your ears, then you will only understand it if you know it or parts of it. Otherwise, your interpretation of what's being said would be different as compared to what is actually said, which, which is true, right? Like, unless you know what you have to hear, if somebody just whispers shit to you real quickly, you won't really know it. So let's go down here. Basically, they tell you have watery mouths, hyperventilation, uh, throat irritation, all that kind of stuff. So basically, it's it's what's being passed into your head. Now here, they actually have some form of a diagram. So directed audio, they're projecting it right to your head. Uh, schizophrenia is a new ad gimmicks. Now, I'm not saying that schizophrenia is wrong by any chance, right? Like obviously, schizophrenia is very real, and hearts go out to whoever who suffers from it. But like over here, they're trying to tell you that like it's not all complete schizophrenia. Sometimes some people can have that stuff tossed into their head. Now I can't prove or disprove this, but at the same time, like, dude, there's some weird shit that happens, ladies and gentlemen, and being a targeted individual is no joke. This stuff happens in real life. There are some people who do get targeted. And again, hearts go out to all those people out there. I hope they end up doing what they can and work together. But the reality is, man, being a targeted individual is some scary, scary shit. And do I doubt that the government can inject this kind of stuff into your head? Probably so. I mean, you don't know what kind of technology exists. You know, if you went back like 30 years and showed them a smartphone, people would be like, whoa, what kind of wizardry are you doing? You have a, com you have a phone that's powerful than the biggest supercomputer at the time? Well, you go 30 years later, Shit's like that too, but let's get back out of here and go somewhere else. Satoshi's treasure, the hunt is on. Clues here frequently, sign up to be notified. All right, so here what we found is a internet treasure hunt, which is interesting. So the hunt intended to test the metal of anyone who wishes to add some excitement to their lives. Okay, what's the prize? The amount of Bitcoin equal to 1 million US dollars split up however the winning team or individual decides. How does that work? A wallet containing 1 million USD worth of Bitcoins have been split into 1,000 keys using the splitting magic of Shamir. The combination magic of the same wizard can be used to reconstitute a private key with 400 of those splits. How do I join the hunt? Classes will be released on this site at a regular cadence. Sign up with your email and phone number to be informed when new clues are released. If you're serious about winning, find friends who can hunt with you. Finding 400 keys on your own will be tough. So basically what people have created, this is interesting. So what's going on over here is there is a treasure hunt going on on the internet. Now, for those of you who don't know what Satoshi is, Satoshi is the founder and original developer of Bitcoin. So effectively what you have over here is an individual giving away 1 million US dollars, of course, if you can earn it. Now, some people have created teams up everywhere and they're reaching out to basically solve this treasure hunt and get the million bucks. So basically what has happened is it started this year, so 4 16, 2019 and some of these keys have been found, some of them have been left unknown. So if you want to join the hunt for getting a million bucks, you can join and do it. Of course, I don't know how legitimate and real this is, but let me go check out their Twitter link. What's going on over here? They've got about 2,763 followers, so you don't really, I, you have competition, but I guess strength in numbers, right? You can get a couple of your friends and figure this out. So let's go see what we've got over here. The Jade Key, uh, basically they gave us some clues. So let's actually go into the unknown or uh, a charitable contribution. Okay, let's go to the philanthropic keys. So this is unknown. And now the only clue we have is a charitable contribution. A charitable contribution. Dedicated to achieving global sustainable development, agents have partnered with Binance Charity Foundation to improve the transparencies of philanthropic donation and to expand the use case for cryptocurrencies. We also want to reward hunters who are willing to donate and help others. From this Sunday, 2019, June 30th, Eastern Time, New York time, wherever time the whichever team donates the most during the following week will be able to claim one key. Four keys in total will be given, key one and key two, key three. So basically, if you donate, you get this key. You can select a specific project you are interested in or donate to the general Binance charity wallet at binance.charity objects list, project list. Uh, let's open that up real quick actually. So let me see how legitimate this is. This takes us to Blockchain Charity Foundation. And here you can donate to Empower Budada. Okay, so basically it's like crowdfunding or donations just through cryptocurrencies, which is really cool. Um, I actually like this a lot because it sort of carries the ethos of deep web browsing in of itself. Because a lot of people think the deep web is full of like some scary, scary shit. And to be honest with you, 
It's really not. And even Bitcoin, where people are like, oh, it can be used to launder money. Yeah, it could. But look at people are people are donating anonymously, like in, in like the hundreds of thousands of dollars cases to like really good charities. To indicate the team of which you are affiliated, please do not donate anonymously. Instead, choose donate openly so your contributions can be tracked. You can choose to donate as an individual or on behalf of your team and use Satoshi Treasure team name required individual name optional as your full name. If you don't have a team or choose to donate as an individual, you can choose a name Satoshi. So basically these people have donated. And I guess if you go over here, is it going to actually donate? Let me just see this real quick. If I go to the donate button, can I see the open donations out over here? Real, oh, they are there. So Satoshi Treasure, Satoshi Treasure. Okay, so people are legit donating like full on money to it. And I, I, that's actually really cool. To indicate the team in which you are affiliated, please do not donate anonymously. Yeah, we got it. Lastly, after you make your transfer, to find more treasure, open up the team, join our Telegram group. All Satoshi Treasure related donation for we published on Twitter weekly. All right, that's cool. So this is how people are going to get one key to the million dollars. So I guess for a lot of people, it's not just a donation. It's more like an investment, if you will. So here's one, don't be so snarky that you have to find three keys and an additional 70 grand will be rewarded to hunters who solve the puzzle. And what's the puzzle? So this is the puzzle, don't be snarky. Um, if you can figure out this puzzle, then you get some keys and I guess straight 70 grand. Um, I, I, however, have looked at it. I can't figure it out so much. And uh, I'm kind of, I'm gonna stuck over here. You got some QR codes, um, a bunch of hashes. And uh, that's about it. So you got timestamps, lengths, all that good stuff. I don't know if I can even show that real quick. So I might actually have to censor that. I'm not exactly sure. It kind of gave me like a weird police evidence vibe. So I don't know. And yeah, that's essentially what it is. So basically what we found is a treasure hunt, which is interesting. I've never actually come across one of these myself. Do you believe you can get a million bucks off of this though? I don't know exactly, but it is certainly more legitimate than some of the stuff that I've seen. So if you want to take a chance at earning $1 million, um, then grab a couple friends, try figuring out as much as you can. Eventually you should be able to get some keys that'll take you to the magical world of $1 million in Bitcoin. Of course it could all be total nonsense, but I think with the amount of money and, and, and people behind this, it might actually be true. I mean, at the end of the day, this could really just be a super rich dude giving out like a treasure hunt on the internet. And for some people, a million bucks is literally chump change. So maybe this might just be that person having a bu bunch of fun with people. They've got other things like the cult keys, which I guess we'll kind of look into here. They're talking about like cults, cell phone numbers, getting codes. I don't know if I'd give my cell phone number to this though, but you know what? What I will do is back out and go somewhere else. How to have fun when you're bored out of your skull. Weekend violence. All right, dude, you know we're into some uh, demonetization territory. So this is by Quantum Positron. Uh, if something ever screamed 90s hacker cliche to you, that would be it. Air gun fun. Air guns are some of the best non-lethal weapons that an anarchist can use to have fun on the weekend. Here are just some ideas. Shoot out streetlights. Don't do, I don't endorse any ideas in this, in this document, by the way. They're pretty illegal, but uh, let's go and shoot out people's windows. Don't do that. Shoot out people as they drive in a car. Definitely don't do that. Find a busy intersection and shoot out the traffic lights. Oh, don't, don't do that. You could cause big accidents. Take up a sniper position and blow out basketballs as kids play with it in a nearby parking lot outside. That's such an asshole thing to do. And there are kids near there. Don't do that. Don't do that to anyone. Anything else you can think of. Firearm fantasies. All right, just jumping the gun from, no pun, pun definitely intended, <laughs> from the air gun to firearms. Firearms are pretty dangerous, but hey, that's part of anarchy, right? Here's some good ideas for him. Take up a sniper position and shoot out people's tires. Yikes, dude, yikes. Shoot apart cars, putting holes in fenders, air cleaners, windows, doors, and of course, blow out the locks. Powerful guns only. Shoot at electrical junction boxes, mounted on electricity poles. This makes an awesome explosions and blows out people's powers for days. It's such a dickish thing to do. Everything here is just complete dickish shit and you shouldn't do it. Shoot propane tanks on gas grills. It won't explode because the propane cools so much when it's released from pressure, but it makes a big cloud and it also destroys the tanks. They're pretty expensive. Anything you can do with air guns. So basically everything above tossed down, it's like a Patreon perk, right? Explosive ecstasy. Explosives are the anarchist made weapon and they can also be used in smaller ways for a lot of fun things, I bet. Put a small CO2 canister filled with black powder under a car's gas tank with a fuse in it and light the fuse, then run like hell. Don't do that, you're gonna blow shit up. 
put out a small cherry bomb or a rack soaked in gas and then lit into the used oil container at a nearby airport. Don't do that. that dude, all of this is ending up in like the most destructive. You could... This isn't like you doing a little prank, haha, ha, goof, goof. This is like federal authorities just stepped in to take you to the magical fairyland of getting your butt reamed for the eternity, dude. That's what it is. Don't do anything like that. Take a lighter, rip off the metal top, close the valve completely, and start the valve on fire and let the lighter upside down somewhere and run. Yeah, that's not doing it. You could cause some big damage. Physical pain. All right, beating the shit out of someone's always fun. No, it's not. No endorsement. You're Wow, Jesus. Awesome arson. Fire's the anarchist's best friend. Explosives, even vehicles, are all based on fire. Burn down tool sheds, barns, mix styrofoam. Why do I believe that what I'm reading is like some anarchist, like, wet dream? Like, this is some wannabe anarchist wanting to do this. Because that's what it is. That's literally what it is. This is some, like, wet dream from an anarchist. Paint gun paradise. Paint guns are air-powered guns that shoot 68 caliber paint-filled gelatin capsules. So what do you do over here? Uh, roof of someone's house. So basically, vandalism. Don't do that. Windows. Yellow and white mix looks like a huge glob of birch. <laughs> Yeah, right? Just like pelt that on someone's car. Don't actually do it. I have to keep saying that for legal sake. But uh, yeah, that's uh, this, this. like we went from like super scary shit to like, OK, now we're like calming down and it's totally normal. You know, let's just let's just make things look like pigeon crap. Door uh, sidings, cars and pl places like rearview mirrors, windows, doors, uh, people walking by. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. Christ. Anything else you can think of. Ladies and gentlemen, this is messed up. Now here they put a PS post scripture. Remember, it's not illegal unless you get caught. Which you probably will, because if you're dumb enough to do shit like this, you're dumb enough to get caught by your local cops, let me tell you. So don't be doing this. Now, of course, this is for education only, blah, 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 blah. Not even for, not education in my terms. Don't do any of this. I don't endorse any of this shit. Uh, this is the most edgiest anarchist document I must have read in a good long while. Now, was it funny to read? Sure. You know, I'm all down for edgy shit to do, ladies and gentlemen, because at the end of the day... That's, that's all you really have as human beings is being edgy, right? Let me tell you. I mean, you grow out of it hopefully by, by age 15, but some people never do. Anyways, though, I think I'm stuck too long talking about edginess. Let's go to the next website. Welcome to the number one Bigfoot forums on the web. All right, dude, we're getting that Bigfoot. All right, do I expect Bigfoot to be real, ladies and gentlemen? Maybe. You know, I don't know if the Sasquatch is fake, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, the only evidence I've ever seen is this one. Uh, I believe it's called Patty. The day someone makes a suit close to what we see in this PGF film, I'll start doubting again. All right, let me just have a little bit more of this fucking vodka. I'm gonna need a little bit more of that before you, uh, before you, before you ever record some of this stuff, right? Let me tell you. But... Uh, <laughs> All right, so let's go down over here. General Bigfoot discussion in the field. Film, video, audio, and photos. So let's have a general Bigfoot discussion. Now, there's a lot of shit. Actually, posts there's like 172,000 posts, so it's a pretty popular Bigfoot site. Uh, when family and friends have had sightings. Say you have a body, now what? All right, so here's the what-if scenario, right? Uh, let's say you have a body of a Bigfoot. What on earth do you do then? I imagine you post about it here. You would be paid a visit from some government-type people who will confiscate it and probably lock you up as well. Then nobody will believe you. One cannot just drive to Idaho and drop it off with Dr. Meldrum because the same thing would happen, I think. If you throw it into your chest freezer and tell nobody, it obviously does nobody any good. Especially the Sasquatches you are ultimately trying to protect. If you hide it somewhere, it will rot. What then does a person do? We live in the year 20 fucking 19, my friend, okay? If, um, if you find Bigfoot, all right, most people, and I'm not even joking, most people will probably just Facebook live the dead corpse of Bigfoot, all right, with like titles like, oh my, OMG, Bigfoot found, emojis like the really cancerous ones. And in that case, all right, it'll be like five minutes before the feds show up and try to hide it. The other thing is somebody could also live stream it, like a real autopsy of that shit, which uh, I would actually have liked to see. Like if you ever found Bigfoot or something and we took it down, I would love to have seen. I, I, per, I foresee some like doctors out there doing like some weird autopsy stream of that shit, like people behind Bigfoot. Because at the end of the day, man, like there's so much of the world. Okay, I'll explain this. There's so much of the world we haven't found yet, right? Bigfoot is one of those things where I want to try and believe it. 
But at the same time, I almost don't because like you think with the area that we're trying to cover and everything and the technology that we have, you know, thermal cameras, drones, all that good stuff, we should have found something related to Bigfoot. The fact that we haven't is kind of suspect in of itself, don't you think? I don't know. It's not like it's aliens where like, we're not, we're obviously not the only people on the planet, but I think we have enough technology on earth to be able to track Bigfoot if we really wanted to. Um, and I think, I think if it was real, we would have found it and taken care of it. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's how it's going to work. But uh, let's go back over here. Let's go see some other stuff. Uh, Bigfoot researchers who have gone to the other side. What? I'm not the only one who has noticed current and past Bigfoot researchers who have crossed the line concerning Bigfoot being a paranormal entity. This is a phenomenon I do not understand. I'm not saying I don't understand the strict paranormal concept. I'm saying I don't understand why researchers that we once knew as believers in a flesh and blood creature are now embracing the idea that Bigfoot is something else. Over the past few years, I've been acquainted with the subject that there's been a slow epidemic of more... Uh, more and more crossover thinking that Bigfoot isn't just a physical entity, which I don't agree with. I mean, I don't believe in Bigfoot as much anyways, but to think that Bigfoot is a ghost is, is pretty meme-tacular, <laughs> just saying. Um, to be honest with you, all right, let's be real here. Ghosts are already hard to prove. Bigfoot's already hard to prove. Dude, combining it together just makes it even more harder to prove. You haven't even gotten near Bigfoot being a physical entity, and we're already up to, like, maybe it could be an apparition. No, I don't, I don't, I don't think Sasquatch is an apparition, and if it is, it's, it's a pretty shitty apparition, let me tell you. Um, the theory, it's the thing, man. Like, when you have a conspiracy running so long, there's going to be people who, like, take it way too far. There's obviously going to be people out there who are like, maybe it could be this, maybe it could be that, maybe it could be this, this, and that. And I, I got to be honest with you, when you look too far into the abyss, a shit consumes you. And you'll be thinking, uh, you, I don't know, you, you'll, be, you'll be gone, all right, at that point. like it's a, you, At that point, you go from, like, having some case to having no case at all. And it's just, it's not, it's not happening, all right? It's really not that happening. Sasquatch Ontario hoax. A friend sent me a following link to a YouTube uh, video showing that Sasquatch Ontario is a hoax. So, apparently, in Ontario, apparently the cottage owner was hoaxing all the time, but evidence only showed when he was around. The video clearly shows the cottage owner went by the alias Daryl, uh, as admitted by the Sasquatch Ontario guy. I just tried to find him, but he's not on Facebook anymore, as his profile is hidden. Anyhow, the video shows the cottage owner doing the vocals, which Peterson claimed were legit. Well, to me, it's clear that it's a person, and now it all makes sense. So, basically, they made a video in my province about Bigfoot, and, uh... <laughs> You know, I I wish it was real. I really wish it was real. But most of the times, it really isn't when it comes to this stuff, ladies. It really doesn't. So here's one that asks a real question, like a real legitimate, uh, legitimate question. Thermal imagers in Bigfoot country. Exactly what I'm saying. We have thermal cams and thermal imagers for a reason. I thought getting into some real world technology for a moment would be good. Thermal imagers. We all know what they are and what they can and cannot do. I know the devices are used on drones by forest services and the U.S. Department of Agriculture to find hotspots in areas in and around forest fires. But I thought we could all dig in and specifically look for information on other uses by these agencies, like tracking migration. I have an interesting article. So, and since the United States would no doubt have seen the value of this type of application maybe years ago, I was wondering if there are systems deployed to either replace or in addition to the many trail cams that we all know the agencies use for monitoring. I also have no doubt that thermal imaging may be or maybe not in real time is part of the neon surveillance system, guaranteed in its place for border patrol on both the northern and southern US borders. Although an ambient daytime temperatures go up and ability to detect warm bodies in the landscape goes down, just thought it might be interesting to find out if such systems are in place outside their use on drones. Can't help but think it would be important info to know about and when they uh, and have when going into an area to do research. Okay. So basically the idea is, yes, we have thermal cameras and the United States uh, Department of Agriculture and like Forest Services definitely has it. So it's like, yeah, bro, if it exists, use it, right? Priceless, but I only feel one half of the equation. Bigfoot cannot hide his body heat. He cannot hide Peart from that kind of technology, but the video feed alone is not proof. Oh my God. Okay, look, 
I, I guess if you wanted to be Mr. Skeptical and figure out like, hey, uh, I just can't believe videos unless I see shit with my own eyes. Well, at that point, dude, buy your own thermal camera and try to figure out Bigfoot for yourself, okay? Because obviously, no proof that I can give you uh, the fact that it exists, it won't work. So if video proof ever came out from a legitimate thermal camera that was vetted by numerous parties to say, yes, this is real footage, then yeah, I'd believe it. I mean, dude, it's thermal imaging, all right? I do believe in, I do believe in facts, okay? If you show me the, re if you show me proof, I will believe it. If you show, if you show me proof today that the hollow earth theory was true and we could go to Agartha right now, I'd believe it. Dude, I believe in reptilians. I'm a man of, of knowing when I'm wrong and believing facts and reality. I work on facts, not emotions, but let's go. You were spot on correct to say it's good to stay grounded in that respect. I also think that a Sasquatch will have a different heat signature than its hairless biped cousins who wear clothing. Why? No, if it's a living thing that is related to like, you know, gorillas and shit like that, of course it's gonna give off a heat signature. Everything living gives off that kind of a heat signature. The way that you describe Bigfoot, it will give a heat signature off. So I, I don't, it's not cold blooded. You know, it's a warm blooded creature from what we know it's obviously going to show up on thermal imaging. The fact that it hasn't, it's weird. But uh, somebody bought a FLIR phone plugins. He got naked and had his, what? <laughs> what? Really? It lit him up like a Christmas tree. They have infrared imaging for your cell phones? No, that's, uh, uh, that is new. That is new. Thermal imagers are a game changer. They revolutionize what we can do in the field. As Nor said, a Sasquatch cannot hide its seat signature. What the government has deployed is undoubtedly state of the art and much better than anything we have access to. So one thing cool about this forum is like these guys aren't out of their minds. Like they know that, hey, if we have thermal imagers, we can do what we need to. So I'm surprised now that we have the technology coming into civilian hands, why we're not doing it. If we have that tech, then I guarantee you it's going to exponentially clean up the search for Bigfoot. Because the moment we can bring that shit into the field is what we're fine with, right? Like at this point, Bigfoot or Big Feet, you know, because I guarantee you it's not just one, it's probably going to be a bunch of them. All right, hiding away from us. We're going to be able to find them unless they're like burrow deep underground or something like that, which we know shouldn't be a thing. If they exist and they're roaming around, we should be able to dig one out thermal wise. Again, be careful. I don't endorse that you go out and do it either because uh, shit can be downright spooky. Let me tell you, <laughs> it's kind of how it is. Here's, here's like the last one where they're trying to find them through like Google earth. And you can see like, apparently that might be Bigfoot, which I guess is kind of a cool find, but like, it could also just be, you know, shit on the ground or something like that. It just doesn't, dude. Every time there's like anything about Bigfoot, it's always in such low quality that I can't figure it out. Like, dude, that is like, why is it every time we get near Bigfoot, you know, when it comes to like cameras or videos or whatever, why is it always filmed on a potato or like some, the first camera ever created? Like, you know, you take like, you take like a can, you poke a hole in it and like put some film reel, like cameras like that. Like, why are we always... Why are we always, in 2019, why are we at this blurry image? I get it's Google Earth, but come on, at least give us some definition, dude. Minecraft 16 by 16 resource packs have more resolution than this. Let's, uh, let's back out, go somewhere else. So this is the reptilian board, ladies and gentlemen. And if it reminds you of like a good old fashioned uh, B or X, which it really shouldn't because nowhere does this, are, if it reminds you of an image board, well, you're in the right place. Let's go join up over here. So ladies and gentlemen, this is an active board which talks about the reptilian menace. So let's open some of these up. Join the Illuminati today. Easy way to join the Illuminati Brotherhood in the world. Are you a businessman or a woman, an artist, politici, and pastors? Do you want to become big, powerful, and famous in the world? Join us to become one of our official members today. You shall be given an ideal chance to visit the Satan. <laughs> To visit the satan uh, if you are from a poor background and you really want to be famous in life or do you want to become very rich in life this is a chance for you to become rich and eradicate poverty from your life the illuminati want to use this to help the poor and also to make people famous in life if you are really ready to become a member of the illuminati temple then contact us uh no you won't and i'm not going to give out the number for this because they have it right over here uh, this is all bullshit. You're not going to join the Illuminati because some dude posted it on an image board. Let's be fucking real here. Let's, let's be totally real. 
totally real. Uh, here they're trying to sell you passports. Getting a fake and a real genuine passport. Um, here's the thing. If you're going to get fake passports, understand that most passports today are electronically tagged. So even if you, getting a fake passport nowadays is not like the good old days of, you know, the Hollywood uh, overlay your photo on another one. No, 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 no. It's not even close to that easy. So uh, if you try doing that, and you go to any place that uh, does some passport verifications, you're fucked. Because uh, the moment customs and security figures that out, they're gonna like take you away and put you back. Let me tell you, it's not gonna be as good as you think. What is the definition of reptile? All right, let's figure this out. Hello all, the high school textbook definition to reptile refers to a scaly, cold-blooded animal that lays eggs. But if you look at extinct reptiles, there seems to be an amazing variation within the reptile clade. Could theoretically warm-blooded, hairy, flying pterosaurs can be called reptiles by our modern definition? Are bird dinosaurs dinosaur bird? Okay, I'm talking about reptilians over here, not about like basic fucking biology. Let's go find something real quick. Illuminati is real and free. Uh, I mean, let's might as well open that shit up real quick. And then you go down over here, they're talking about the FBI's... Uh, oh, my name is Paulina, and here is my testimony. I've been trying to join the Brotherhood of the Illuminati, and it has been my name... Uh, and here's my testimony. I've been trying to join the Brotherhood of Illuminati and it has been proving abortive. Okay, <laughs> abortive. I have tried so many people, all to no avail, until one day someone I don't even know sent me a number and said that all I have been looking for is lies to the hands of that number. I was wondering, first of all, is your caps key broken, by the way? Like, we need, we need to talk about this real quick. Um, again, they just talk about basic shit about becoming Illuminati brother level six. <laughs> What what level of Illuminati are you? Oh, I'm just I'm just level six, man. Pfft, level six. Get out of here. I'm level sixty nine, dude. Uh, choice in UK with cars. My dear brother and sisters, you won't believe in what I'm saying right now. Okay, they're giving away numbers to. This is all just scam shit. That's what. It, none of it's real. I mean, but then again, did I expect it to be real? No, no, I didn't. Dark conspiracy. Doesn't anyone realize who's still on the go? The old crowd's still here. Let's go down over here. As Mr. Squiggles confirmed, uh, the mods deleted all the posts on DC. At first, they tried to blame me, and they had their own page up when Squiggles returned. The reason they deleted the posts was both were caught editing and deleting posts along with locking topics to win arguments. JVH did the same. Okay, let's go down over here. They're locking to suspects and everything like that. Basically, we came across the drama alert of drama alerts on, uh, on Reptilian Resistance Forum. Uh, you go down over here. They've got a bunch of extra stuff. So, like, the Reptilians are right about 3D humans. I've never heard about 3D humans, but let's go into it. And as you can see, it kind of keeps going on and on and on and on and on. All right, so, well, actually, it doesn't go too on and on. I'm a human who understands the reptilians very well. Okay, all right, dude. You consider reptilians as evils, but you humans are complete, irrational, mentally disabled. Whoa, now, I agree some of us have some mental problems. But uh, to say all humans do, it's pretty fucked up, my reptilian friends. I'm a human who understands it. You sound like a humanoid cuck to me. I'm a close to permanent now in the fourth dimension, although I fall down to the fifth because of parasitic 3D humans. The new world order has to be accomplished. All parasites has to be birded. Walk with your gross and aggressive dog, you hypocritical Western parasite 3D human race. It feels like God 3D printed us out, but at least we had more intelligence than this shit. You will be treated like you treat and slaughter. Animals like pigs and cows and other non-dangerous animals without any mercy and ethics while you spare the most parasite of all dogs. This is the reason why I changed my mind today. You deserve draconian torture, sick humans. Jesus Christ, dude. This guy's fucked up. The reptilian actions are justified. Predators feed on predators while I and soon... A tarrant human reptilian accepting agents will plan and slaughter the support of your entire family, you evil, hypocritical parasites. <laughs> All right, I want to see what the response was. Trudon Sapiens. All right, God bless. Even the response made less fucking sense than what I accepted. I am not a lizard. And then they like post that they're not a fucking lizard. Are you? I don't know. I don't know if I am, but it led me to a different discussion board that I'm not looking into. Actually, I might. I'll just save that into the documents real quick. Whew, 
Whew. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's video has been interesting. Um, I got to say, lots of conspiracies. We even came across some Bigfoot documents that you probably shouldn't follow and a board that is just mind-numbingly awful to all hell. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of Deep Web Browsing, Dark Web Browsing, and Dank Web Browsing, the part of the week where we take a look at that danker side of the internet. Let me know what you thought about this week. Again, any negative stuff that you saw today, we don't even endorse hell at this point. I don't even think I endorse the positive stuff. I'm just going to stay out of this. And, 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 and you know what? Stick to myself, because that, that's where I am at in life. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like if you dislike it, I am out.